Yeah. Warm up time. Study Monday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. You're going hard. How's it going? Hey, Gria. Stretch time. Gria, I must say you did a great job on round two. Congrats on stealing the win. And um, same to you, Atsuki. Fantastic. Looked really, really cool. Uh, very impressive. Um, very impressive uh, pictures. Really cool. There were some really fantastic entries, and I must say, Dear Bard also destroyed. I love it when Dear Bard paints like that. It it just becomes he he has a he has this. I don't know when when Dear Bard paints dark and moody, he gets this. I don't know. They contain some sort of power. It's really fascinating to see. I think Dear Bard. He's a great painter. And then you see his like line work stuff, which is a polar opposite. It's quite fascinating. Atsuki, it's all about that pressure. Oh, absolutely. That's that's what I've been talking about. All you know, every every time Unreal Bjornament comes around. It is portfolio material because it forces you to make smart decisions and under pressure and usually that comes out great Gria, yeah their board's entry was absolutely beautiful really cool this had magic to it um yeah by the way so this week's study is from FilmGrab, which is a website that they take good screen grabs from movies and put them online. Um, it's a really cool um, website. I'll show you. So they, they have like this, you can just scroll whatever they put up recently, or you can uh, go by movie. You know, and then there's a lot of different ones from movies. Uh, so it's a really cool way of, um, you know, getting interesting compositions because film grab grab snag it just apostrophe ref um, uh, usually the directors they have a keen eye for what should be you know put in frame and um, you, there's a lot of compositional elements you can study in these film grabs because of, of usually when when the directors are so seasoned that they can put a big movie out. It means they have far above average uh, trained eye on, on framing things. Then of course there are certain uh, exceptions which are fantastical directors which has a great sense of camera and uh, they have really cool um, frames by default. But generally studying film grabs uh, can be a great way of upping your s color sensibility because usually they grade movies, right? They have to grade movies because otherwise it'll look like a home video. Uh, they they frame everything and they light everything. 
so these three combinations uh, is usually a really really good thing to study film grab it's a really good practice if you haven't you can get a lot of useful information about color choices some there was a period where everything was teal and orange <laughs> orange and teal uh, you know matrix times everything was just orange and teal orange and teal so the colors themselves wasn't weren't that fascinating to look at um, but there's usually a lot of cool film graphs that you can uh, look at and study from if you want to up your compositional skills and color skills and lighting skills so I recommend doing at least a couple of these you, you you pick some that are striking, that has a good composition, and you do a study of them. And it doesn't need to be anything major. It doesn't need to be a portfolio piece because obviously it's a film grab study. But uh, picking information out from great minds is a good way to do it. Gria, yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, there used to be a hack in Photoshop where you s you print screen the movie and you pasted it in Photoshop, the the screen grab, just you know screen dump. But you played, you pressed play on the movie and you went to Photoshop to paint, and in the copy paste screen grab the movie played but what happened is that you could put a layer on on top and start drawing on the movie and what you could do is you could draw golden ratio proportions and you know like cutting the frame of the video up in golden ratios and you just press play and you looked at the movie how they arrange everything according to the golden ratios you know like a, a uh, third in, you know, all these things. So that's a, that was a really cool hack you could do. I don't think it works anymore, or maybe it's a codec thing. But I tried it and it doesn't work anymore. But uh, yeah, that 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 used to be a really cool, cool way of doing things. Roller Master, the Macbeth movie. Oh, that's cool. I don't think I I started watching it. I never finished it. Anyways, let's do the study. Um, it's really bright. I'm going to lower it a little bit. Okay, so what I want to try to capture is is this interesting um, interesting shape and interesting uh, relationship between colors and light. So we'll see how that works. But uh, the basic idea is I want to grab it with, grab the volumes with gradient. And for those who don't know, this screen grab is from a movie called Break Unbreakable. It's a pretty interesting movie. A bit dark. But it it kind of invites you to an interesting universe. So yesterday, most of you were there on the stream, but those on YouTube and those who are not, wasn't there yesterday on the stream, yesterday night. Round two has been, the judging has been cast and, and it's public and all the feedback. So anyone want to read the feedback from these professional judges, <laughs> professional artists helping out being judges? Um, 
there's some valuable information in there and interesting comments. Uh, so just type apostrophe round two uh, or go to forums, Firestarter forums. Some good, some good stuff in there. Hey, Fuxia, how's it going? Congrats, Fuxia, on <laughs> easy win. save that selection for those who don't know you can right click uh, selection save save selection then you get this screen and then you can tag it um, you can choose which channels and so on and uh, it saves here so you can control shift click the the layer icon and you get the selection like if I deselect now a control shift click I get the selection so you can have multiple different selections and you can always return to them uh, as long as you uh, right click save which is you know which is really cool Hey Miguel, welcome back. Glad that you could uh, bless us with your fantastic presence. And uh, congratulations on uh, making it to round three. Messing up. Proportions are all wrong. Get a grip, Bjorn. Fuxia, yeah, absolutely. Miguel, <laughs> busy guy, eh? Gria, yeah, that's how the selections uh, work. 
it's really handy especially if you have a the need for a lot of selections and uh, the good thing about using it the way I, I showed you is that you can have really flat image with not with thousand layers and you can um, always access something a selection that you need without needing to have the mask on your canvas so for example now you know I haven't saved the the shape in a mask like here right I can paint on top of it I can do whatever I want but I know that it's saved in channels so if I want to get back to that shape I can easily uh, just go into channels control shift select and uh, I'll get it if I want to you now go back in and control some edges or edges or clean something up always with these kind of low value paintings I have a hard time seeing the subtleties because I have sunlight straight in my face and it flattens all the the subtle shapes <laughs> or subtle values Yeah, I, I am Swedish, yes. But I haven't lived in Sweden for 10 years. I ran away. I picked up my bags and went, nah, nah fam. <laughs> No, the reason why I left was work. I got a. Uh, I got poached by Sega. And there wasn't, uh, at the time, there wasn't a big future in games uh, in Sweden. There was a f just a few companies, and to get in there was really really hard because the competition was high you know because um, there was a lot of indie stuff but I always wanted to go big or go home hey I mean how's it going <laughs> Rollomancer, yeah, absolutely. I mean, now I'm I'm royally messing up. I'm not even close to proportionally correct. That's 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 what I get for for jumping the gun, right? But uh, to be fair, I'm not looking for likeness. I'm looking for the um, the colors and the gradients, and just the general mood.
really hard to see in with the sun in my eyes. I'm fine, thanks, Amir. Thanks for asking. It's hard times being home all the time, you know, but I'd rather be home than getting this crazy disease, virus, and put my daughter's life in jeopardy, so. We are staying indoors mostly. We do go out when the weather is better. Uh, try to um, exercise and get some fresh air, but hasn't been that great. <laughs> this is melted Bruce Willis. remember I used to do a lot of studies and when I did a lot of them my accuracy was really really high but that's the that's one of those things you know when it, when you're doing um, for example portraits a lot if you spend a lot of time drawing people you really really get good at uh, proportions and accuracy so like with anything in art or anything you do in life really is the more you do it the better you get so the fact that like i stopped um, doing a lot of portraits i stopped doing a lot of studies in terms of trying to get the likeness down or get the accuracy down and i spent all like all my xp points <laughs> in the um, imagination and design and not so much about uh, kind of laser accuracy in in replicating a, a source that skill has gone down a bit granted granted like I said I've, I've have I've not been trying to get his likeness down but most mostly I've been focusing on the relationship between the colors and so on but nevertheless this looks like a burn victim <laughs> Roller Master, yeah, it's a nice uh, motion blur rain, absolutely. Amir, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Roy Batty, wicked nickname, by the way. All praise Blade Runner.
was Unbreakable done by, what's his name? Shambalam Balam Balam. <laughs> I'm sorry, director. But isn't that, what's his name? Shambalam. <laughs> the horror movie guy. Shambalam Balam Balam. Yes, all right. Cool. Good friend of Better Flick, Thunderblatch. Yeah, I know that guy too. Thundersnatch. Oh, there was a dip in, in the intensity of the sun because the window is just there. I could be like, oh, values. <laughs> Of obviously, when I paint, I pull the curtains. I have the curtains open for for your sake, so you can, so you can observe my, my beauty. If I would switch off, it would be like this, and you would obviously, I mean, you would see me, but it would be in the darkness. Here you see, all that is me. Glass? Is that the follow-up? Rollomancer, why not use a lamp? Because it'll be the same. In order for you to see me with a good light on, I would need a lamp here. So it would be the same. Same, same, different. Unbreakable split and glass. Oh, that's interesting. Fuchsia. <laughs> there, there you go. That's great. <laughs> God damn. That's 
got some seriously messed up. That's what you get for just jumping in, right? Zero planning, zero everything. You get that. Almost looks like me. Punished Kai? This is um, this is a study, a thirty-minute study of the basic idea of the study was to try to capture the kind of gradients in the image, and I didn't care about um, uh, measuring. And currently, I'm paying the price for not caring about measuring in the in the image and it looks like something you should take out the back and shoot <laughs> because the, the general focus of if you look at the reference there is this cool uh, gradients that's very kind of attractive and how how the volumes play with each other um, which I've obviously, the basic idea was I'm going to try to, whoops, I'm going to try to capture that. And I only focused on that and I'm currently paying the price for it, <laughs> but it's okay. The study is paying dividends, right? Because I'm thinking about the gradients. The colors, not likeness. So I don't care in that sense that I'm failing at the resemblance of Bruce Willis burn victim. And I, and I think um, I messed up. I think I would say I messed up in terms of um, from the point of establishing the gradient. I think I messed up the next step. The, actually what I should have done is I should have, if I would have been, if I would redo it, this study, I would spend a little bit more time mapping the face before jumping to the gradients even, to try to understand how, how the gradients are working in this image. just for the sake of um, kind of, what's it called? Efficiency. Because I've spent a lot of time correcting things that's arbitrary. Stupid uh, time waste of correcting proportions and correcting things that if I would have spent that little bit of extra time measuring correctly, those issues wouldn't be there and it wouldn't keep me from doing the, the moves that I need to do, right? Oh well. It is what it is.
And now we've got Bruce Burn victim, Willis. Punished Kai. Yeah, <laughs> well, cheers, yeah. Cheers. Like if we, if I scale back the study, right? So Bruce Byrne is, so this was the steps I took, right? And there I made the mistake when I started making the face because I jumped the gun on making the face. You can see how it's off proportions. The establishing marks were off proportion. If I would have just spent some time measuring the distances when I started putting down the marks like that will lay the foundation of the painting I would have done a better job but then you can see constantly I've been trying to kind of save the shapes save the forms which is keeping me back from actually uh, getting to where I what where I where I wanted to get right but like I said the original intent of this study was not to paint Bruce Willis. The original intent was to capture that relationship between the gradients. Um, I definitely learned something by it. I think I think what I'll take away from this study is is this part how when the face looks out the gradient goes in uh, there would be a step here if you, I, I didn't have messed up the face and I would have would have done a correct gradient but you can see the beginning of the gradient while at the top the gradient because the hoodie goes forward and he's looking in the hoodie there's two gradients meeting each other I think that'll be my takeaway uh, from doing this study where um, which was the intent to to study that aspect Uh, Roy Badin, I usually don't construct an image, but when I'm doing studies where the point is to replicate or point to get a certain elements, you have to measure where your marks are going. Or if you just paint a head, you have to always, go, there's always going to be corrections because if you're emotionally making a mark, you're not, na not naturally doing it accurate. And especially if you let the mark lay, and not undo it and redo it and undo it and undo it because during this painting like I make a mark right and I look and I make the next mark I don't undo the mark and try to get it correct so that that in itself is is uh, is harder to get right you know that the mark is, is correct. Uh, but usually if you do uh, under, uh, under drawing or a line, it'll be much easier. Anyways, uh, time is up. There's two gradients on the face. Yeah, let's find someone to raid. Uh,
Let's raid a gamer. He screams a little bit now and then. Uh, he's a he's a Croatian gamer. He plays now. He's playing a closed beta kind of DayZ game. Uh, anyways, let's raid him and see what he does as it's uh, is Easter holidays. Have a good one. Good night. I'm gonna do the outro, then take you to him. So have a good one. Tools.